In today's video, we are going to talk about physician assistants or how to become a physician assistant. So in this video, we'll look at who physician assistants are, the types of physician assistants program, the roles and responsibilities of physician assistants per where they work, the educational requirements needed for you to become a physician assistant, and lastly, the schools that offer the physician assistantship programs. So if you are interested, please stay tuned. Physician assistants are mid-level health professionals trained purposely to respond to the shortage and misdistribution of doctors in the country. So physician assistants are a group of people who are trained like to bridge the gap between the need for doctors and the lack thereof because you know it takes a long period of time to train a doctor and when they are done training you see that they are absorbed at the bigger bigger hospitals and health facilities. So the lower facilities like the health centers and polyclinic they don't get access to the doctors like you hardly see a doctor at this these facilities back then so the ministry of health thought it wise to train people that have the skills of a doctor in diagnosing and treating conditions and have the skills to identify critical conditions and refer to the bigger facilities where the doctors are and so the PAs were trained for a short period of time mostly four years and then you start to work and they are multi-purposely trained you know a doctor in the facility is supposed to be the superintendent of that facility but in the absence of a doctor the PA acts as the superintendent or the PA becomes the manager of that facility so they are trained with diagnosing and treatment and all of that and also trained with managerial skills to be able to manage a facility or a health center there are three types of the PA program the PA medical which is very very the, which is the most common physician assistant medical option PA dental or physician assistant dental so you act as a dentist in the absence of a doctor and then we have PA anesthesia because the commonness is the PA medical I'll talk more like my presentation is more on the PA medical than the PA dental and anesthesia because the PA dental and anesthesia mostly still work in the hospitals or even if they are in the health center they are mostly in the uh, dental unit that's for the PA dental or the PA anesthesia will be in the hospital but in the theater. So my presentation is mostly on the PA medical. So the roles and responsibilities of a PA is one to diagnose and treat common conditions and diseases that is brought into the health facility. I like at the uh, health center the, in the polyclinic where there is no doctor or even when there is a doctor they assist the doctor in the consultation process and like I said in the absence of a doctor they run the facility they are the managers of the facility they become the facility head in the health system we have breakdowns for easy management so we have the national directory we have the regional health directory we have the district health directory even in the district we still have sub districts for micromanagement so a PA at the sub district is also the sub district head a sub district mostly comprises of one health center or a polyclinic and then uh, supported by chief zones so the PA will be at the health center or the polyclinic managing the facility but also oversee the activities of the chief zones in that sub district so the PA at the sub district is also the sub district head so like in my district we have five sub districts but we have four PA sub district heads because for one sub district there is a doctor so he is handling the managerial issues in that sub district but for the rest of the sub districts we have PAs that are heading the sub district so the rules assigned to a PA is dependent on where you find yourself working because if you are in a hospital where there are, there are lots of doctors mostly you will find yourself assisting the doctors in day-to-day uh, -day activities but when you are at the lower side then you take on more managerial and leadership roles I hope that makes sense so let's look at the educational requirements for becoming a PA there are two ways you can become a PA. First is the direct route. So with a direct application, then you have to be a science student in SHS. That's how you can apply for as a direct student. So you have to have A to C6 in English, Math and Science, and then A to C6 in Physics, Biology and Chemistry. And with this, you go for four years because it's a degree program. So you go for four years and then come out and start working. The second route is through the post basic program. So the opportunity is given to registered general nurses, registered mental nurses, and registered midwives to do the PA program as a post basic program after your national service and serving for two years on the field. 
so when you apply you only go for two years like you join the program at level 300 and then 400 and then you are done so within two years you are done with the program or if you are if maybe the sub district they are in need of pa and they give the opportunity and show interest even if you're you have not served for two years and you've served only one year in addition to your national service they can admit you per the request of your facility or your district they can uh, they can admit you to do the program for the pa medical the training for the post basic program is two years but for the pa dental the training for nurses is three years so like if you are a nurse and you are going to do pa dental you do it for three years but if you are going to do pa medical you do it for two years but if you are already a trained dental surgery assistant with two years work experience you also do the program the pa dental program for just two years so i found about 10 schools that render the pa uh, program so i'll list them at the end of this video so that you will see and know and if you want to apply for the pa program you have to do your checks well because the grading the educational requirements or the grades that are required for the programs are different like the one i stated in this video earlier is the requirement for kid temple but when i was looking at you has i saw that the cutoff grade was around 12 for the 2020-2021 academic year like the 2020-2021 admissions so i don't know like i couldn't get for the other schools so if you are interested please be sure to check the cutoff grades for that school before you apply so that you don't waste your money or miss your chances so i hope this is helpful like this video share and subscribe if you've not done that yet and up next is a list of schools and i'll see you in my next one bye guys